I'm Andy with Competitive Cyclist, and this is the Ridley Noah Fast. Let me start by saying I'm one of Ridley's biggest fans, and I've had at least one of their bikes in my garage for the last 10 years. The current one is a 2008 Excalibur with Rival 1x that's been spray painted a few times, and I still ride it two to three times a week. But my love affair with Ridley actually started way back with the first generation Noah. You know, the bike Robbie McEwen rode to countless tour stage wins. I'd just come off a great year on board a Cervelo Solus Carbon, and by comparison, the Noah was equally capable, but the nuances of the handling and the comfort of that bike, especially under pressure or when the road got rough, were just in a different league. More than any other bike I'd owned before, it had an almost indescribable ability to wiggle me into and out of some really close finishes and some close calls. The Noah's gone through a few iterations since then, and to be honest, none of them caught my eye until I got a sneak peek of the fast. So, as you can imagine, I was pretty excited to throw a leg over it and see if Ridley was able to weave some threads from Robbie's cloak of invisibility, or maybe a little agripal speed, into the fibers. Thankfully, the NASCAR graphics, funky integrated brakes, and airplane wing tubes of the past are gone, and the new frame looks more like an all-rounder than an aero bike, and you know, it, it rides that way too. Ridley achieved this balance through thousands of miles of testing under Team Lotto and an equal number of hours in the Flanders Bike Valley Wind Tunnel, a collaboration with other select brands in Belgium. Ridley fine-tuned their F-surface technology and added F-tubing to the mix, both of which create turbulent air for smooth air to flow over, and they left just enough room inside the tubing for your brake and shift cables. And to keep them from flopping around in there, Ridley went a step further by creating the F-steerer tube, basically a half-moon shape that creates an internal channel for the cables. They've also moved away from the integrated seat post to something a little more traditional, and the fork crown integrates very cleanly into the lines of the head tube. Of course, it's all made with a mix of you know, 60 ton, 40 ton, and 30 ton Torre carbon, the best in the world. The result is a tidy bike from every angle with incredibly clean lines that's aerodynamic, but far from ugly, stiff, but far from heavy, and fast as hell over just about any terrain it crosses. I threw on my trusty 303s with tubeless 28s, and it did everything from uber fast group rides to a four hour mixed terrain event. And while the Noah certainly excelled on the road, it was a surprisingly capable all rounder. My favorite thing about the bike, aside from the way it looks, was its ability to big ring its way through the rollers and rip up hills. Seriously, it climbs better than just about anything I can remember, arrow or not. I've ridden Canyon, Pinarello, Specialized, and BMC's version of the everyday aero bike, the all-around aero bike. And in my estimation, the Noah is simply better across the board because it does more, better. And the handling, oh man, the handling. It takes me back 10 years to those dodgy crits and wild sprint finishes I did on the first generation Noah. There's just zero twitchiness. It's planted, it's predictable, and when you grab the drops and throttle it, the Noah shoots forward like it's on fire. It's one of the most rideable, tolerable, and manageable super bikes I've encountered. It's kind of like the Porsche 911. Fast enough for any track day, but usable enough for every day. If you have any questions about the Ridley Noah Fast, please give us a call or send an email to sales at competitivecyclist.com.